Morning everyone, we're out and about in Bronze Betsy today. Bronze Betsy is technically, we call it my car. Um, I parted with my Ford Ranger last year, which was a little bit sad, but it didn't actually suit what I wanted it for in the end. Um, so Bronze Betsy has become our, we call it our town car. <laughs> Um, but she will be set up for camping. I fully intend to still go out and do some swagging myself, um, but we've just been so busy that I just haven't got round to it. So um, we do always carry a fridge in the back of the car because we live rurally. Uh, we often have to get out and about where we need to pack some food and some water. Um, today's also a, handy for the shopping. Also handy for the shopping. And today's a perfect example uh, as to why when you're traveling rurally, it's a great idea to carry a fridge. Um, we're heading off and we're actually heading to Port Piri today, uh, which is a rural, well, no, it's on the coast, sorry, in South Australia. Um, that's one of the bigger towns that we frequent often when we need to do a big shop or have any med medical appointments and things. It's going to be 45 degrees there today. So um, when you are traveling out here, you do actually need to be prepared, especially when you're traveling in that sort of weather. Uh, 45 degrees, if you get stuck on the side of the road, um, there are some black spots through here where there's no phone reception, um, then you are certainly gonna know about it. So it's always a good idea to carry extra water, some food. Um, if you do get stuck on the side of the road and you can't contact anyone, well, obviously number one rule is you stay with your vehicle, and you just find as much shade as you can and with some food and water you should be right. I mean as you can see we're on one of the, the main roads today. So uh, last year we bought a small home in a small rural town in South Australia uh, on the edge of the Flinders Ranges and what that does mean for us is that we can get out and about in the Flinders Ranges between other travels. Um, we've chosen this small spot because it has an amazing community. It really is a small town with a huge personality. The people are wonderful, they've been so welcoming to us which we really appreciate and there's a lot to do in the town. So um, you know I've done it myself, there are towns that you drive through which are a little blip on your map as you go through and you think wow what do people do here? Every town has a story uh, all the people in the town have a story and you know in our experience they've just been so lovely and welcoming. Would you agree love? Yes, yes. completely. Yeah, yeah, completely. So we've we bought that middle of last year and we feel really at home there. So yeah, but what it does mean is that we have to head out and about for the bigger things in life. So uh, we do have a small IGA in town which does a great job at stocking uh, at stocking gear that everyone needs but it's also good to head off and go to the big rural centres to do a big stock up but in our case being in our early 50s um, as many of you would know it also means some medical appointments um, so I'm struggling with a foot issue at the moment and what that does mean is that I have to go and see you know see a podiatrist and get some treatment and things for those I've had ultrasounds done so we obviously, we can't get that done in our little town. There's a few things that we can get done. Um, so it does mean we have to travel. So for us, this going off to get the, the bigger shop, the bigger groceries, it's about a 200, just over a 200K return trip. So we factor it into a day usually. We go off, we get what we need, um, you know. And if you're following my Facebook page, you know that, you know, 200 k's for me could turn into an eight hour expedition. <laughs> Aiden loves it, don't you Aiden? Yep. Uh, can we just stop here? Can we just look at that cemetery? Oh, I haven't been to this town. Can we have a look here? Um, and even now when I've been through the town so many times, I always find something else that I can take a photo of or have a look at to show you. So there's always a silver lining, you know, to those things of of having to travel to get your groceries, um, but we absolutely love it. So what it does mean for us is that we live in a town that yes, we have to go off and get our groceries and do a big shop or whatever, medical appointments and things, but you know, the, the ups of being in a tiny town are, we just don't have an expensive lifestyle there. 
uh, we're both doing some casual work I'm working I work casually from the home so I can be at my work in two minutes and home in two minutes so two minutes home at lunchtime two minutes in the afternoon to go you know to come home you finish at five or whatever and you're home by ten past quarter past half past five at the latest so you've still got plenty of summer time to enjoy so that's you know one of the reasons we chose this particular town as our rural base is a because uh, it's beautiful it's on the edge of the Flinders Ranges which we both love and adore and, and we'll spend every moment in that we can when we're not doing other things um, and it's also a town full of great people and there's a lot to do there so um, do you have anything to add Aidan? No just yes it's a it is I suppose an idyllic lifestyle compared to living in Sydney mm. some drawbacks of yes you have to go and do a hundred k each way drive to get to the big shops and some medical appointments but you only do that once a, a month maybe and the rest of the time you have a five minute stroll to the yeah. main street yes we like to say we live in the cafe set now <laughs> our little town has three great cafes and uh it's it's kind of weird because we're not really towny type people but we love living in the town because it means we can walk to everywhere um, we can go and grab a coffee, go to the butcher, go to the supermarket, say hello to everyone. But we do have to factor in more time when we go down the street because everyone stops and says, hello, how are you? Uh, what are you up to? And all of that fun stuff. So um, it does, you know, you go to get, get some milk and it's not unheard of for me to be gone for like an hour. <laughs> but it's great. Um, so, you know, pros and cons to everything, but in our experience, it sure beats living in the city so far. Um, and yeah, it's just a base for us where we can then head off to, to do our travels. And, um, you know, many of them are in the Flinders Ranges for weekends and things like that. So, um, you know, something for those of you to think about who might be in the same position that I was, that I sold up my home and left you know, left the city and essentially everything that you know, people often say to me, do you regret that? Um, not for a moment. Sure, there's things that I miss. You know, I miss obviously my children live in the city, my friends over many, many years live in the city, but I cannot now imagine living back in the city ever again. Um, and so that has been a huge learning for me during my travels. Um, and, and and in all honesty, I probably could have gone a lot longer of not having a rural home base. Um, it wasn't something that I really felt I needed. I was quite happy doing the gypsy thing and, and you know, finding accommodation with work and, and, and really enjoying that. Um, but, you know, life's all about compromise. And Aidan over there, Mr. Driver today, uh, you know, he's, he definitely wanted a home base. Um, men seem to be obsessed with their sheds, uh, don't they? <laughs> oh, that cracked a smile. Uh, Could do with a bigger one. Yeah, he, he still wants a bigger one. Uh, obsessed with their sheds and wanted a spot for, you know, tinkering and doing whatever. He, whatever it is that he does in that man shed. Um, so, and we have got storage for the caravan and stuff as well. So, you know, life's about compromise and, and I don't regret for one moment having that home base it's it's just so far been a great experience um, and yeah this is our our routine drive so uh, I'll show you a little bit more as we get closer to the coast um, as we said in our introduction video not coast people so we get there do our groceries might go to a cafe or something for lunch and go yep yep yeah yeah look look there's water and then we head home <laughs> um, but you know I, shh, don't tell anyone but in a couple of weeks hopefully we might get Aiden to the South Australian coast um, to actually spend some time along the coast and, and all the coasts that he hasn't seen in South Australia yet because school's about to go back so once they're back then you know the world's our oyster <laughs> might see some oysters 
Mm, well, neither of us eat them, yeah. but we can certainly find them and show them to you. So anyhow, that's us today. Oh, I forgot to say that it's not unusual for us to get a detour. So we have to factor in always extra time for appointments and things because you just never know what you're going to get out here. Um, you know, could be road resurfacing, could be bridges being fixed after flooding, who knows? So uh, we've got this de detour in place at the moment, but that's okay because it means we get to hit some dirt and that never hurts. So heading into the big smoke. <laughs> well, for us these days, this is the big smoke. Port Perry, it's about 18,000 people live here, I think at the moment. Um, so we've got a few different rural centres that we can go to, um, depending on what we've got going on. So today, the pick is Port Perry. Aiden. Hi. <laughs> so here we are in Coles, and yeah, we're doing actually someone else's shopping as well. And that's rural life. Seriously, this is old people life. Look at this. Yeah, both of us. Both of us have to wear bloody glasses in the supermarket. God, I hate it. And me especially, because I have to look at, read every single label of anything that I ever eat. So frustrating. <laughs> So several hours later and we're heading back to the ranges now. Cars stocked up and we actually wanted to show you around Port Piri today and a few little spots on the way home but the temperature gauge has just hit 43 degrees so better days that we can show you around. Um, we've obviously got cold gear on board even though we've got our fridge because we've kind of helping others out as well we've got the car full so heading back home now and uh, hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse of rural South Australia. Can't wait to take you back into the Flinders now that we're doing a little bit of vlogging uh, but we certainly won't be doing that in 43 degrees so keep cool everyone. Okay so the other thing I'm hanging out to show you when it's not 43 degrees is South Australia is very well known for the stone ruins out this way where the early settlers came and they're just absolutely stunning to have a look at. Some of them you can wander through. So we will definitely be showing you through some of those. As I said, when, when we're not going to roast. Um, loads to show you in this area. Really looking forward to it. Who says you can't teach old dogs new tricks, love? Hey? Oh, it's not that hard. 